What is up, everybody? Welcome to TPI, the Total Podcast Idiot Show, where we cover everything and anything related to hardwood, the best game ever invented. I am Total Podcast Idiot number one, Robert, and that's Total Podcast Champion Andrew over there. Andrew, how you feeling? Are you hungover from the championship celebration? What's going on? How you feeling? We're still, we're still calling me that. Oh gosh, I want to go back to being an idiot. No, I think yeah, I will yeah. now being in D one. You, you cannot go back to being an idiot with a championship on your resume. Ah, great. Uh, <laughs> Unless you're Mike McCarthy. Uh, anyways, moving on. <laughs> am I am I still feeling a uh, hangover from the championship? Uh, I mean, based on today's result, I, I don't think so. Dominican with a 41.1 on the road over another D1 team looks pretty good. <laughs> I'd say. I mean, didn't that just make the hangover that much more intoxicating? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. But tomorrow, uh, I think we got kind of an easier matchup. So I'm going to play some younger guys anyway. So it was like that, you know, they say the hair of the dog. For you, the hair of the dog was like win a championship and then turn around and beat a D1 team by 41. It's like, you know, you're, you're just over mm. here celebrating right and left. Hey, but then you know what? On Saturday, guess what? My two teams play each other. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. Uh, what, I'm not what? even sure what I'm going to do yet. That's what I was going to say. What are you possibly going to do for that game? I mean, so far, I think I'm just going to go as uh, hard as possible for both teams. I mean, like starters, everyone's playing. I can't okay. waste these redshirt games on my own self. Like, my own team. You certainly can't throw with either one of your teams because it's obvious and you just put it on the podcast. Yeah. But, <laughs> but on top of that, like both teams, honestly, like it should be pretty competitive this year overall. So I want them to you know, whoever, whoever wins, like it'll be a quality win. So I want that to hold weight, you know? Yeah, that's fair. Well, the positive about that is that with either team that loses, it'll be a quality loss. Yeah. Or I can make sure I'm healthy for coming out of it with both teams. Hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a sudden outbreak of E. coli. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I think we'll see. I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. I've been more thinking about like the other games in the non-con to like try to figure out uh, my plan with who plays basically. Uh, and that'll be today's topic, actually. Who, who to redshirt, how to redshirt, when to redshirt, um, all that. Implications of your redshirting. Yeah, we're going yeah. to get into the nitty gritty of the redshirts. And obviously like it's just it's all about like our own experiences with our own teams. Cause that's what we, we know best, what we've been tracking. I'm sure plenty of other teams have much different experiences. Um, so we can't speak to all of those. Um, but you know, we're just trying to put what we got, what we, what happened to us out there. Right. We are, but a podcast of two idiots. <laughs> so. uh, but we, we got some other news first, right? We other stuff to talk about. We do. Have we we haven't hit our one year yet? Okay, no, no that'll be yet. next month. Oh next wow! Month. Yeah, yeah, our one year anniversary. We will have to do a one year celebration, like a podcast video. Okay, okay, <laughs> sure. It'll we could just put all of our favorite players from our teams, like like the little figure guys that you did, and then like have them popping champagne with each other. Dude, it's hard to do animations. <laughs> I, I mean, I'll hire someone. Oh, I won't. Okay. I won't. But. It would be cool if I did hire someone with the zero money we make from this. Yeah. I mean, Hey, we do it for the community that's anyways. True. Okay. So yeah, let's get to the pertinent information that you were talking about. So tomorrow kicks off day one of the West coast conference hardwood tourney pod. Well, like not tourney, but um, the pod scheduling and to kick that off tomorrow, I get to play with Santa Clara. I get to play San Fran. San Diego plays Pepperdine. This is in the uh, pod B, so the lower pod. In pod A, the higher pod, we have Gonzaga, Gonzaga, Gonzaga versus Loyola Marymount and St. Mary's versus Pacific. So exciting, exciting stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited. It's, uh, you know, a unique way to have some rivals and we're going to have some promotion or relegation and we'll see what happens. I know that my team's not, all that great this year, but I still think I can kick San Diego's ass. So hopefully I do. <laughs> I mean, what they have the, they have a, the, not the top team in 
D2, right? That's UC San Diego. But they have a good team. Again, I yeah. remember we, we looked at them. San Diego's um, in uh, D1 now. That's right. Of course, they promoted. Of course, of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, all those sound like interesting matchups. I know that that first pot with obviously St. Mary's, Gonzaga, Pacific, and Loyola Marymount, you said, right? Yep. Those are all D1 teams. But then, like, you have San Diego and Santa Clara, both D1 teams. San Francisco, I believe, is also D1, actually. San Francisco. Let me double check. I want to say yes. They're either at least D2. Or D2, D2, D2. Ah, okay. They haven't quite come back. I'm thinking of uh, San Francisco State. That's right. That's right. Um, and then who's the fourth team again in, in B? In B? Um, yeah. say Pepperdine. Pepperdine. And they're LL6 or D3? Pepperdine Waves or LL5. Oh, they promoted. That's right. They promoted, yeah. Yeah, I just I remember seeing them on some interesting prospects. That I was like not happy that they got them. <laughs> that's all I remember seeing. Um, so yeah, that'll, that'll be interesting. I mean, like you said, your team, maybe not the strongest right now, but you know, hopefully some things, you can make some things happen. We're top heavy, baby. So watch out. We could still score. We could hang with you. Yeah. I found that so, out yeah, today I, against UCLA. I mean, talk about how this whole thing came together and, and what you're looking forward to about it. Well, so NAF was really the mastermind. Like, I need to give all credit to NAF. Um, he's the one that came up with the idea and did a lot of the reaching out to all the teams involved. But he basically wanted to simulate, you know, the real life West Coast Conference and, and you know, establish some actual rivalries um, for conference mates. And so he reached out to all the different teams that are in the real life West Coast Conference. And it just so happens Santa Clara is one of them. I didn't care to choose that when I started the game or anything. Um, <laughs> But he reached out to all of them, and then we had everybody sign on board. And then because there was eight teams, we decided we were going to have two pods. Um, pod A would be like the higher pods, so the teams with the higher TPI and, and, and you know, in the, in the D1 and whatnot. And then the lower pod would be teams with a little bit lower TPIs, and that way you, you maintain some sort of competition, right? Like you're not the team that's at the bottom of the TPI in, in the pool and getting your ass kicked week in and week out, because then it's not really fun. You can get really stagnant. Right, right. Yeah, so I'm just looking forward to, like, the natural rivalries that are going to come from it because I haven't had any rivalries in Santa Clara. And, like, just from starting the West Coast Conference pod and posting about it, like, San Diego and Frogman already, like, was talking crap and saying, like, oh, just count that as an L now. And I was like, all right, well. <laughs> and then I just got my little jab back now. So it's kind of fun to, like, look forward to that game and to game plan against Frogman. And, you know, it's, yeah. I'm just excited to have, like, a natural rivalry now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I know, I know both you and I kind of haven't really scheduled rivals as much. So it's cool that you're jumping in on this, um, you know, right away. That's cool. Yeah. And uh, let me just share my screen real quick. Mm -hmm. um, so NAF, if you're interested in learning more about the West Coast Conference pod and some of the teams in, in them and whatnot, NAF goes to uh, great lengths, takes a great deal of time to chart out the team's best players, um, gives a quick summary on some of the best players and the questions like, you know, sophomore Holmes will force himself in the starting lineup at some stage, but could he play SF and push Hampton to SG? So he, he goes like really into detail. He does some analysis um, and, you know, it's good stuff. So if you want to read a little bit more about the West Coast Conference and our pod, you can take a look at NAF's posts um, and and see who he, he likes. He likes specific in pod A and San Diego in pod B. I'm going to type back, I like myself. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think I'm more excited to find out about the idea spreading out. So why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I think probably drawing inspiration from, from the West Coast Conference one, um, Kay Henry put together like this big eight one, the original big eight in real life. Um, so that's Colorado, Iowa State, Missouri, Nebraska, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. Um, so all of them have human uh, presidents, luckily. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if that can always be said about some of these like groups that we try to put together. Um, so all of them have joined this the same type of structure, you know, eight teams, two different pods. 
and, you know, using those rivalry games to schedule each other, basically. And so I think they got it organized um, like that. And so you can you can check that out in the forums as well. I, I'll share my screen to show people that. Um, and so, yeah, he, he breaks it down with the with the schedule and how that goes. Um, yeah, let's see. Oh, I guess they don't have all. Oh, there's all a, people there's yet. a more recent update. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess Washington, one of his other team is going to have to serve as a filler for Iowa State. That's too bad. Yeah. Um, but you know they they got that organized, which is cool. And then, you know, they got some great teams. Number two, Kansas State. I got, I don't know if they're number two right now, but you know, a legends team here, Kansas back in Division One here, Missouri. They're in uh, D2 now, but, you know, they've been pretty strong uh, in Colorado. And you can see that he, that K. Henry lists like the top player really by, for every roster. He didn't quite go in depth like NAF did, but I mean, who does really, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but, you know, it, you can see the top players in like Guillermo Cordero, one of the top juniors in the nation, uh, that 15 pot international guy. Um so yeah, you can kind of see, and then, you know, it has the TPIs as well. So you can kind of get the overall like strength of the roster. Um, yeah, so I'm, it's another cool idea. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing, you know, the results and how it, how, how it goes, how it uh, evolves from here, you know? Yeah, so they, they took a little bit different um, approach here. Uh, so if you go back up to the top, it looks like the schools are going to have two permanent rivals, right? So Colorado will have permanent rivals in Nebraska and Oklahoma state and Kansas will be Kansas state and Missouri. And there's some really obvious ones, right? Like Oklahoma and Oklahoma state and whatnot. Yeah. Um, so I think that's, that's a cool aspect of it. And then it looks like there's going to be rotating for the other two, two rotating games so that it keeps it fresh. Um, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. I see. I, yeah. I guess they're not like pods necessarily. It's like they're yeah. using all four uh games instead of the pot so it, yeah that's interesting that's definitely a unique twist to it yeah so it, like it's gonna build up that that rival the intense intensity of that natural rivalry right like i'm sure nebraska is going to circle colorado and oklahoma on his schedule every single season because mm -hmm. uh, he's going to play them every single season regardless um mm -hmm. and then with it rotating you know you'll get two fresh opponents each season for you know the for three seasons until it rotates back so I think it's a pretty cool idea. I still yeah. like the pot idea because I like, you know, competing to move up or down. Um, but this is an interesting, fresh approach to it too. Yeah. I mean, I, in some ways, like you said, the consistency is nice because you can circle that game and like really develop the trash talk behind it if you want. I mean, you know, it doesn't have to be. Um, but I also do like the promotion relegation aspect that you guys in the WCC are going to do too. So I think it's... Um, cool either way you know yeah do it set it up somehow and, and it'll be you know i think it's cool yeah i i mean the more ideas that we get the better right because the more people are willing to come up with different tournament ideas you know the more creative they get it's just better for the community in general so yeah you know this is another interesting idea i like it yeah and speaking of invitationals or tournaments i mean we got the newly announced St. George invitation hosted by the Dixie State Trailblazers. Uh, so Dixie State's putting this whole thing together. This is for next season, though. Uh, not, you know, not yet for this season. But, um, you know, kind of similar idea, I would say, from these other ones where, you know, they're going to have eight teams, preferably. Um, but I think they're, CJ Rick said he's open to having more teams involved in it, too. Um, so you can see, you know, six teams have signed up, including one of my teams. Um, but you know, you got some heavy hitters here. West Virginia is a legends team, you know, um, That's you know, you wild. Got, yeah, you got some D2 teams. You got, I think one of these teams is, uh, D3. Sorry. I'm, I got some burps. Uh, <laughs> one of these teams is a, is a L as a D3 team. So, uh, you know, yeah, you got some. I think it's Michigan State. I was like trying to figure out if they still were or not. Um, you know, yeah, you got you got teams of all levels, so anyone can really join. You know, it's not like I don't think it's going to be like super competitive. Obviously, you want to win, but like it's not going to be like cutthroat. You know, you just want to get 
good competition in, you know? So I think that's cool. Um, let's see, I think he wants it to be like a round robin thing. I don't think there's any other way you can do it. It's not like you can make it like tournament, like where the winners advance, you know? Right. We have to use these rivalry games for that. Yeah. Um, but I think in terms of like expanding the field, I think he's hoping that more non-con games are added to the schedule. I'm not sure if that will really ever happen. Um, but, you know, I think it's an interesting idea. Um, but yeah, I think it's really cool. So, you know, there's still two spots left in this initial eight. So if you're interested, sign up. You just post on this thread in the forums or uh, PM uh, CJ Rick here uh, to express your interest. I was just looking at it and I think somebody updated it literally as we were podcasting like there's a oh, really? team that joined yeah oh my god i don't see it oh the post oh my gosh you see irvine join in okay yeah okay. so so there's one spot left if if you guys want to get involved one spot left one spot left yeah um but yeah i mean like like i said i think he's open to more teams you know he said i'll consider expanding to 12 teams so you know that's uh there we go there we go good stuff good stuff <laughs> all right um so what are we going to talk about today though? Real quick before we move on, actually. So oh, I was it reminds done. me it we're reminds me. Uh, no, 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 we're not. We're not, we're not. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. mean, we should be, but it reminds me of a conversation that we had had with not we had with Steve, but somebody had had with Steve about instituting off-season tournaments. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that conversation? Um vaguely, I guess. It was good. Yeah. So he was not opposed to the idea of having off season tournaments as part of like a team's schedule. So like mm -hmm. almost like an exhibition, but, but you could choose it as a tournament style, like, or mm -hmm. like more like invitational games, I would say. And I think that's a really cool idea. Yeah. I mean, I think it'd be interesting. I, I mean, I love the invitational games at the end of the season. Um, in, in the exhibitions in the beginning of the season too. But, you know, maybe we could use that time to like schedule teams ourselves, like much beforehand, I, I would guess. But I don't know, it's hard because like, especially with the invitationals, like some teams make the tournament and then you can't schedule them, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, you know, you could, we could use those games to like, schedule these tournaments instead because I, I, you know I don't, I don't think there's really any space to like add more days to the cycle really is what, right. I'm, yeah. what I'm thinking so you got to use the days we have and so you know these invitationals are like they're interesting they're fun but maybe we can like spice them up by having more a tournament instead where we we try to pull up with some people some other players you know or or what if what if there was four exhibition games and it was like the invitational games where the first three, whoever had the best point differential and record coming out of those. Oh, but then you have to break it up into pods like it does for the invitational games. It gets a little complicated. Yeah, it gets pretty complicated. Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm not entirely sure. But I think it's an interesting idea. But, but the other thing is like people, especially me, <laughs> use the exhibition and the invitationals for like much different reasons than to like try to win or you know so what difference would it make i mean because other people which like maybe I, I don't know like maybe i'm more motivated to win but now i'm conflicted and ripping my hair out i don't want to rip my hair out guys i mean they would be just as valuable as the as the um the exhibition games i guess i mean like do they you know the simple questions of like do they count towards red shirt games live towards those five games or not Okay. Okay. I mean, I think it's an interesting idea. I think it's an interesting idea. It's all I can ask for you. From you. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Sorry for that little side tangent. No, I think it's cool. I think it's cool. I think it ties in well, because, you know, we talk about red shirts now, right? And so, you know, the, obviously it's like, okay. I don't know how to make this more clear. I try to say it as much as possible, but there's always questions, right? You, you get five games for red shirts, players who are going to red shirt. They can play in five regular season games. That's non-conference and conference. Okay, hold on. So let's just make it as completely simple as possible, okay? Okay, okay. So let's say you're red shirting a player on a specific season, okay? 
here are the games that are going to count towards his redshirt eligibility. Regular season games, including non-conference, conference play, conference tournament games, and NCAA tournament games. Yeah. You only get five games to play him throughout that entire spread of games. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to make that clear for people that may not understand. No. Yeah. And, and like, there's a lot of people who like have questions about it. So trying to like say that as clearly as possible. Good. Yeah. Um, so those first three games on your schedule, right? The exhibitions it's marked as exhibition. You can see it like on, on your schedule when you look at it, I'll try to share my screen and we can look at that. Uh, right. Exhibition right here. You see that they do not count towards the five games. Okay. All right. These do these not, on conference games do these conference games do right uh, i have to go last season to show these these playoff games they do these invitational games they do not right so that's how it breaks down so if you do end up in the invitational games and they are not counting towards a red shirt limit then that should tell you that that is a good candidate of games for you to play your red shirting players or your young I mean, guys. If that's your, if that's your goal. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I did right with college and New Rochelle, um, Barrow and Barrow, Russell and Gomez were all red shirting that season. And you see, obviously they're playing. So yeah. Yeah. Maybe I should have played them more. Hmm. It's a good way to, <laughs> it's a good way to sneak minutes. Right. Yeah. For definitely. guys that are only going to get like, I don't know, let's say on average 150 minutes a season in a redshirt season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so so there's that. And then we can go into kind of what we were, what I kind of showed last week, but we can do it more. Yeah, it's fine. I don't care if people see this. <laughs> um, You're just going to change it game by game anyways. Yeah, I mean, pretty much. So. <laughs> yeah, it is. So the red shirt button, the box, right? It's this right here, guys. That, right? Gillespie, Carmen, Fontana, they're not red shirting tomorrow because they're playing. So yeah, that's why it's unchecked. But yeah, that's the box you check at the end of the season. You want to make sure it's checked at the end of the season. It does not matter in terms of like, it kind of matters, I guess. But in terms of like them actually red shirting, it does not matter if it's checked all throughout the season. If it's not checked at the last day of the season they will not redshirt if it is checked then they will so you want to be as careful as possible and i always think it's good to click the button because then when you go to depth chart it's going to show rs next set player in the depth chart right right and so, that'll that'll remind you that. to take them out of your depth chart yeah so i can show that with carmen here i think so you can see like when when we go to carmen here you know he, he takes is, notes <laughs> I don't think it's hard to know what my lineup is. It's not. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> not this year, at least. Um, so you can see Carmen has that red shirt. Oh, look, he's a shooting guard. I guess that's kind of a surprise for some people, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he's a 6'9 shooting guard, yes. Um, yeah, so you can see he has that RS next to his name, right? Uh, so that means, yeah, he's slated to red shirt. However, he's not, he's not going to be. But yeah. However, that yeah. RS alone does not mean that he will not get into the game. Right, right. Yeah, very true. Very true. So out of an abundance of caution, you want to click the red shirt button and set his minutes to zero. Yeah, because then you can otherwise you might get stuff like this happening. Let me go to a, ring, a game. Uh, shoot, but I got to remember which game it is. <laughs> I think it's this one. Where Glenn Palmer, he was red shirting last year, plays one minute. Because I forgot waste. to set his, his uh, minutes back. Such a waste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you can see, like, he redshirted last year, redshirt, but because he played, uh, he started four games because I start them if they're going to redshirt. When, if they're going to redshirt, I start them when they're going to play. But except for that one game where he got one minute, <laughs> that's what happened. Yep. And so people may not think that's a big deal, but that's like 25 minutes of, or whatever it is of yeah. missed development time. Yeah. 20 to 30, sometimes even 40 minutes, essentially of, of playing time And you know, minutes are our development here in this game. Yeah. Minutes are very valuable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's talk about, like, you know, the, the, like, sim that is kind of the simple stuff, but we can talk more simple stuff even. 
Um, that was sort so, of just like a, if you're new to the game, you have questions, here's a quick primer right. kind of thing. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think so. Um, so like who to red shirt and, and when to red shirt, I guess. Right. That's, that's the questions we're going to try to address today. Um, on, on several different levels in several different ways. <laughs> um, so I think, like, what are some questions you ask yourself when deciding if a player should redshirt? What are like well, easy questions, simple questions first? So first of all, the very first thing you're gonna consider is if they're a freshman, you're, out of all players that you have, you're gonna likely consider your freshman to be redshirt more than anyone. Right. Right, because they're usually not coming in at a good enough SI to be contributors to your jet part regardless. Mm -hmm. You know, so yep, like, yep. for example, here, Jesse Barr and Lawrence King, those are two guys that you are obviously going to redshirt because you have a lot of depth above them. Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, the freshmen usually aren't, like you said, usually aren't going to come in to be even a bench piece. I mean, obviously, sometimes they can. Um, but, you know, even if they are, there's probably someone like close enough to them where it's worth redshirting them, right? Yeah, so like only in the worst scenarios of depth where like you haven't planned out properly, like ahem, um, <laughs> are you going to need to play redshirt freshman? Or I mean, are you going to need to play freshman unless we're talking about top SI five stars? Then that's a different battle. Right. Yeah, I think that's a different story. You know, I, I don't have those. <laughs> yeah, I, neither of us probably won't. <laughs> yeah, you've gotten some five stars. I've got an A five star. Oh, I think you had more than that. I think you and it, was the, it was the worst of all the five stars. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't quite panned out. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah, so these two guys are going to redshirt. Um, you know, like you said, the age of them, like not just the fact that they're freshmen and they're worse. I think the fact that they're freshmen and young means that they can still grow a lot more. Obviously, you know, younger players grow more, they grow faster than older players. So redshirting them now, I guess, I mean, I guess it kind of doesn't matter. If they played, they would grow a lot, but like there just isn't the, the space for them, which I think we can talk about next, right? So I, what I like doing if I have, let's say I get two players, um, that are similar positions. Let's say you recruit two centers, right? Mm -hmm. And one of them needs to serve as the backup role. I just like rotating the red shirt. So I'll choose one to play that year as the backup role. And then he'll red shirt the following year. And then, you know, red shirt and then play the following year. Yeah, you've done that uh, uh, with Oswego. It seems a, a couple like, of right? times. Yeah. 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 So I always think that's a fun, interest, uh, an interesting way to do it. Because then you don't really split up minutes between two guys. You don't red shirt two guys at the same time. You know, it gives you some depth and injury coverage and whatnot. So I like so that what, personally. What, what you're, well, you did that with Santa Clara kind of too, with Rob Vernon and Shane Land, in fact, right? That's exactly what I did. So, so, so break, it, break that down a little bit more, right? You okay. bring in two guys, at least two guys, who are similar positions, same positions, right? Yeah. Okay. They were both and shooting then. guards coming out of, out of high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you are LL6 and your team is trash, like Santa Clara was when I took them over, I believe it was like a 113 TPI when I took them over. 117.9. If your team is that trash, right? And you recruit a bunch of guys. So the two guys that I thought had the most promise out of my first recruiting class, and my first recruiting class was like all three stars. It still ended up like rank 63rd, which is great, but it was just because of volume. But if you end up getting two guys that, out of your five that you think are going to be the best players that you have, then that very first season, I redshirt all of them except for one. So I didn't redshirt Rob Vernon and I redshirt the rest of the players and I put Rob Vernon on double plus and just let him shoot like crazy all season long. Right. Thinking that, okay, if this guy has the ball in his hands at all times, he's probably going to develop a little bit better. Mm -hmm. And then the following season, you know, I'll sit him, I'm going to redshirt him and I'll put the ball in Shane Land's hands more. And then hopefully they both get, you know, because of volume and because of minutes, they both get nice um, development bumps. So that was my thought. Now, Rob Vernon is only an 11 pot, or was, graduated, Hall of Fame, um, was only an 11 pot, but in his freshman season, went from 109 to 130, so plus 21, that's good. Mm -hmm. He won freshman of the year, all-conference shooting guard, and conference player of the year. <laughs> Even well, though let we... Me, <laughs> let me um, pull these up, actually, sorry. I no, it's fine, be. yeah. Even, even though we went 3 and 38, 
<laughs> oh yeah. So let's let me first start looking at that history. So when you first took over, that was that was this season, and that's when you landed Vernon and Grant, uh, uh, Grant and, and Land. Are you sharing? Oh, sorry. No. <laughs> All right. There we go. Uh, 2013. This is when you landed these players, right? So then this yes. next season right here, 2014, when you went 338. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> um, that's when you, you played Vernon a lot, right? Yep. I played Vernon. I think it was like 30 minutes a game or something. 31.5 minutes a game. Yeah. And, and so that's when you, you grew 21. You can go to the uh, Hall of Fame, sir. Oh, that works too. Uh, I don't remember seeing you put him in the Hall of Fame. Okay, oh, you did. Oh, you did. oh he's um, in the Hall um, of Fame. <laughs> okay, so um, yeah, so plus twenty-one. Okay, continue. Sorry. To <laughs> he averaged twenty-three points a game at one Conference Player of the Year and had two Player of the Game awards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wasn't. I wasn't. I was very surprised by that. We were both very surprised. <laughs> um, but my thought was, okay, this guy's going to have the ball in his hands, like at all times, uh, he's going to shoot what 19 shots a game, 12 of those three pointers. <laughs> um, you know, hopefully he gets a nice, a nice, uh, SI bump. And then the following season, I'll put the ball in Shane Land's hands. Hopefully he gets a really nice SI bump. And then both of them will be redshirt freshmen by the time they're, they both have their redshirt classes and they'll grow together. That was my thought. Uh, let me, let me pull up Shane Land too. And then actually oh yeah pull up pull up encino man encino man <laughs> all right so so we, you see we see vernon's year where he gets the ball a lot right 23 points conference player of the year all conference freshman of the year as well <laughs> and then land also gets freshman of the year um doesn't quite light it up but, but you also had like some other threats your roster was like a little better here yeah, the 2015 season, our TPI went up to 131.7. So mm -hmm. it was it was a it was a bit better, more more well rounded team once Land had the volume uh, than it was when Rob Vernon had volume. Right, right. Yeah. So so yeah, this I, this is interesting because this is actually this is not a strategy I've really used to you know get two guys at same or similar positions and rotate their red shirts. I think this is really interesting. Uh, I think it only applies typically if you're going to be bad enough at LL6, but I suppose, I suppose it could work in other formats, right? Yeah. I mean, I think you've done it with Oswego in LL5 too, right? With, with a uh, blank and chip last year, um, you know, you're kind of considering doing it this season uh, a little bit, right? And we, we can talk about that. Um, yeah. There's three players I'm debating for two spots with Oswego or potentially for one spot. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so um yeah the other things uh you know just to like think about it more simply though i want to go back to college of new rochelle here um you know with with my guys it's like i'm gonna get i'm gonna uh, just and to just finish this off so we can move on basically <laughs> to to more advanced thoughts with us we go um i'm gonna basically try to play them as early as possible um, luckily seeing our schedule is like really bad <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> uh, non-conning me. Um, I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to try to like play them as early as possible. I think I might save some for like injuries or, or in, in conference, but I don't know. Um, but like, on, honestly, they're not even really good enough to like sub in for injuries really, you know, cause like, I mean, Barrow is going to come off the bench for me. He's a 139 and that's this basically the same position that Lawrence King is, you know, um, cause I have Evans and I think banding is my starting small forward here. Um, and then Barr, yeah, he's a 90, but like I have William Hills, William Hills is like not going to play this year. He's my fifth big man normally. Like, so if, if, unless like three big men get hurt for me for a game or more, Barr is not going to even be an injury replacement, you know? Yeah. Bars, bar is a good example of one of those guys that you get and then you stash and develop. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We'll see how much he develops. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so let's Real let's quick. talk about hold on. Yeah. Can we go back to Rob Vernon? I just oh sure, sure. This is gonna encapsulate the point of why it's best to be done for LL6. Click his career high points. <laughs> 45. Oh, because you lost. <laughs> 
So we lost 114 to 93 in a game where my shooting guard scored 45 on 35 shots. And took he made 10 threes. Good old Angel Jimenez. Good old Angel Jimenez. That was one of his good games, actually. That's pro- probably the best game of his career. Oh, good old Ryan Tharp. Uh, oh, trash. Who, what was Parkinson's first name? <laughs> Did he remember? I don't even remember. Is it is it Alfred? I don't know. Let's see. Albert Arnold, Albert Arnold. Arnold Parkinson. <laughs> Uh oh, good old. Do you remember McMichael? Daniel McMichael. Of course, I remember McMichael. This is like mem- going down memory lane for us guys. <laughs> but my point, my point is why this encapsulated. Oh my God, go down to my weighted skill and my TPI. <laughs> <laughs> my point is, is that this is much more doable when you're LL six and you're building up a trash program, because I'm not demoting anywhere. I'm not taking any penalties. Or anything like that. I'm, I'm literally just biting, or, you know, taking my time, and developing my players so I can make a run. That's great point. Yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, can we talk about like if you're not in, you know, a sucky team? Like, I think just a, a crappy team in general. Like, even if you're an LL five, four, whatever. If you're going to demote, I think that this the answer is the same. Where you do this type of thing. What if you're not like, would you, you don't think this still works? What, what do you think? I mean, so when I reference it, like being LL six only, it's like, how many times are you going to have a, sh- a guy shoot what 30, 35 times in a game? Like mm-hmm. I fed him that pure volume strictly for development reasons is my point. Now, like if, if you're in an LL four situation or LL five situation, right. Then it's really context dependent. It depends on how strong your conference is. And it depends on, you know, how strong the rest of your roster is. Um, but sometimes there are difficult decisions to be made. And maybe you, Oswego from last year is a good, a good case study for that. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about Oswego then. Yeah. So um, go ahead. Let me, should I share my screen? Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Okay. Sure. Well, I'm still in the Santa Clara box score. So well, let me. I mean, it's a uh, beautiful search. box score to look at, is it not? <laughs> no. No um all right what do you what do you want to talk about with us again um okay so pull up my roster real quick all right and then just sort by si yeah it's easier yeah. okay right. so last season and i'm i'm missing my starting center from last season from the last four seasons as we goes all-time points leader and rebounds a solid <laughs> player right yeah um, yeah, yeah. We, we mentioned him a lot yeah uh well i just needed people to i need to make sure people recognize you want to you want them to recognize put some respect on big dog's name um for sure for sure so i was faced with the task or i was tasked with the idea of okay i really want one more year out of carrie schultz right Right. he was like 154 at the time as a true a true junior he's as you can see a 13 pot four star and he's a big man he's really talented big man and so i was like hmm I want, I really want one more extended year out of this guy, like towards the top of his SI distribution, because big men at the top of their SI distribution, right? Once they've reached their ceiling, they're freaking good. They're more impactful on the game, I think, than any position. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, am I good enough to promote from LL5 to LL4, given my conference strength, without Kerry Schultz, who's a four star big man, right? And it was a tough choice. But in the end, as you can see, I ended up redshirting him. Now I still earned promotion. Okay. Um, but it was close coming down to the end there. Um, and so I think, you know, in this case, this is an example where like I'm in a competitive conference, you know, I was with Kay Henry and Wash U that, that season, I'm in a competitive conference. It comes down to whether or not I can actually promote or not. And the very last thing you want is to be 25 or 30 games into a season. And you have to pull a red shirt because you're unsure whether or not you're actually going to promote. Because then if you waste that red shirt, you wasted all that development from those games played. With the games missed, really, right? The games, yeah. Yeah, yeah, with the games missed, right? So, like, if a guy ends up playing 15 games because the last 15 games of the season, you're like, shit, I really need him to promote, and I don't want to lose the season. Or even just dem- avoiding demotion, either or way. Or avoiding demotion, either way. So, like, if you're going to redshirt someone, that decision needs to be made, like, off the bat, right away. As and, early as possible, uh, yeah. yeah, at least, yeah, yeah. But you, so you need to make that decision and you need to be resolute with that decision, right? Yeah. I mean, obviously like we all get that pool of like, oh, I'm so close to, you know, promoting or, or avoiding demotion or tournament bid or whatever it may be, you know? And it's like, 
or the, the attorney, the, the conference title. And like, those are valuable. It's so you, you really personally have to, to weigh each of those, the scenario you're, you're in against that red shirt uh, year and, and the games you've missed. I mean, like, like you said, if you make it five games left or whatever, you know, it's like, that's pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, but if you make it with like, you know, a, a few games into the season, cause you're like, oh, it looks like I have a good tourney shot. Obviously you can't really tell about conference yet. You know, that's not the worst thing though. Right. I mean, uh, sure. with you yeah. and Cole Brown last year, I mean, you and Cole Brown, it was a different thing, obviously, but like that mistake didn't, that happened early enough where you like still played Cole Brown a, a decent amount of the season. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so sure. Yeah. Like it's not the end of the world, but like, I think for both of us, you know, there's two factors here. Number one, he's a junior. So if I waste his red shirt, he's going to become a senior and I'll never get that red shirt possibility. Mm -hmm. Right. So it was that it was last season or never, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, and then you just want to hold on your players as long as possible. Of course. Yo, I, I, okay. <laughs> we'll have this argument next. We'll talk about this next, but, <laughs> and then number two, what was my point going to be? I forgot what I was going to say. No, just, all good, all good. You interrupted me, and I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I know. I mean, um, I did. <laughs> Sorry. No, so it's it's registered or nothing. And then number two, so it comes about the argument of whether or not do you want more seasons out of your guy when he's a higher SI, you know, with these talented players. And that's the point that we're going to get into in, in just a minute here, I think, right? Uh, well, I'm probably in the uh, in the few, in a little bit, not quite. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, I mean, you you decided to redshirt him but you you kind to maximize that talent obviously he's really good you're gonna love having him for this upcoming season the next season after that because you might uh you might promote this season and and if you don't promote this season it looks like you i don't know if you will next season <laughs> it's, it's this season yeah yeah this season's probably your best shot but you know that then you would double promote that's really big um and obviously you promoted without while redshirting him which is really good but like it was close like you said so like you would have liked a larger margin for error for sure. Right. Yeah. And like, you know, it really comes down to your preseason research and, you know, we look at, and we look at like TPI per, like by, by conference and by teams and, but you need to look into the rosters a little bit more and see sort of where people's strength and weaknesses are. And if it's senior versus like underclassmen heavy or whatnot, but like, I had the feeling that my team was going to be good enough without him that we could promote. And like you said, it was a little bit hairy towards the end, but I mean, we went 24, six in conference without him. So, right. So I mean, let's, I mean, it's not even just about like using those five games in conference. It's like when to use them, like what matchups would you have used Carrie Schultz versus Quinn register right here, who you redshirted last year also. Right. Yeah. So, so I was never going to play register. Um, well, um, I love Quinn register. I told you about him and oh my God, he's so you good. did. He's good. Yeah. Uh, I think he went like plus three today, but so, <laughs> or was it me. plus four? I don't remember. Go ahead and click him. <laughs> um, oh man. Plus plus four, three. three. Yeah. Plus three. Um, plus so, 24 plus 24. I was, I was never going to play register last year. Cause I didn't think he was good enough and I had enough depth at his positions. Sure, yeah, I just did. I wasn't going to play him unless, you know, it was five games, but with Schultz, I made a mistake. So last season, you know, we talk about, Oh, you need to be resolute in your decision and decide really early with Schultz. I played him in like five non-con games that like really didn't matter that much. And so I lost him for conference games that matter conference tourney and then the national tournament. And I really, really regretted it because in the national tournament, I feel like had I had Schultz available to play him and, you know, it's a little bit more difficult to predict the tournament because you're assuming that your team's good enough to be one of the tourney teams, you know, whatever. And then you don't know who you're going to face and how far you're going to go. Yeah, yeah exactly. That's tough. Yeah. yeah. Because then you don't want to, you don't want to save five games for your player. And then at the end, you're trying to play him in the tournament and he only gets one game, but yeah, yeah. But like, you know, my opponent last was Minnesota State, who I think was your final four opponent, right? Yep, yep. And they had a really good roster and I lost by three. And I really feel like if I had Schultz in that game available, I might have come out on the other side. Um, and so I regret playing him in five meaningless non-con games. 
Now, the other games that I wish I had him for were against Wash U, the conference leader. If I could have played him twice in our head-to-head -head matchups, you know, then maybe I could have swung one of those games in my favor, or I could have played him against the number two team in the conference, and I could have swung one of those games in my favor. Yeah. Um, but just having the option there. Or I also had the scenario where Dalton Big Dog Wallace, I can't, I, I just, I love saying his name, <laughs> where he missed one game due to injury. And it's like, okay, well, I would have loved to just plug Kerry Schultz in for the one game that he missed. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. I think yeah. that was, that was a game we lost to Sanford, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. I yeah. Know. So I, I would have loved <laughs> to have, have Schultz to plug in there. So, like, mm -hmm. see, so like, if you're going to redshirt somebody that's an impact player, like an example, a junior who's a high enough SI, then save him for five games that aren't meaningless. Save him for five games that matter. Yeah. His impact could put you over the top against a conference opponent or in a, you know, national tourney kind of thing. Right. Well, for like register, it kind of doesn't really matter as much. With um, register, like I found starts yeah. for him against teams that were bad. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Right. So good, good. I like that. I like that thought process. Um, yeah so that's i think that's really interesting i think that's like the crux of kind of what people have to like go through in their head with like advanced research planning it out figuring out yeah who who can i save for when um yeah yeah so um do you want to hit on santa clara or should we go to dominican next uh let's go to dominican i've been talking for a while Okay, sure, sure, sure. I'm, and it's kind of like a similar, I could just click my team because I'm on that profile. That idiot. And you have no idea. <laughs> so, you know, like my, my red shirt guy is, well, is everyone. <laughs> but last season specifically is Bruce Spam. Um, you know, uh, let's see, how, how do I talk about this? It's very similar as how you described with Kerry Schultz, but I did plan it out and <laughs> I, you know, I kind of picked and choose which games I would play them at. And I, I honestly like regret one, but like, it's not that big a deal. Um, Wait, which one? He played against Columbus state last season. Cause Columbus state, you remember they started out like super hot and they had like a seven footer. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, I got to save. I'm going to play Bruce. Wayne here. <laughs> and then I won my 53. <laughs> um, so yeah, and he was, I think, his player of the game. Uh, he came off the bench even, but yeah. Because um, I was scared of this dude. I was scared of Caden Flint. You yeah, because Flint was good last year. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I, I played, I redshirted Span, but I was like saving his games. Um, and, you know, I, I knew I, especially after non-con and early on through conference, like I knew I was going to be, a tournament team like you know i was one of the top rpis i could just see it happening um but then i played him against slippery rock because slippery rock was a big matchup but for me right and i lost that game actually um so then the big decision was do i play bruce span against in the second matchup against slippery rock or not honestly i don't even remember what i did <laughs> um like i don't remember what his third game was uh just making that noise um, was it against Liberty Rock? I don't think so. No. Who did I play him against? I don't know. I played him a third game somewhere here. <laughs> what <do> you... <laughs> you know, they can see you now. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. <laughs> um, I don't remember where I played him, but basically he had three games um used up by the start of the, the national tournament right so i was like i'd hate to lose in the first round and only have bruce fan play three games so i played him in, in this game and you know it was helped by the fact that florida tech had like some big men that i needed to like have a bit more talent for um so i played him here and then i was like okay what am I going to use this fifth game on? Like, you know, and with the tournament, it's like anytime if you lose, you're out. You can't, I can't use that fifth game then if I don't play him. So I was like, okay, which of these games do I play him for? And so I thought about like, okay, what is the game that means the most, right? To me, it was the elite eight game to get to the final four, because once you hit the final four, you get 12 points for siege. So I played him in the elite eight game against Wyoming as his fifth game. 
and he played uh, seven minutes because <laughs> uh, he fouled out. Uh, you're muted. I can't hear you. Oh, I, I didn't, re- <laughs> I didn't realize I was muted this entire time. Yeah. Yeah, he fouled out in seven minutes. It's hilarious. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So this was his fifth game, which you know, great use of his fifth game, but. But that was my thought process, at least, you know, with, you, with using him. You were almost more disappointed that his fifth game was only seven minutes than you were excited about the fact you made the final four. Uh, I believe. You're like, yeah, but his development. I was like, you made the final four, bitch. Shut up. I, I believe my my first reaction was Dominican. And then my second one was, oh, crap, my power forward only played seven minutes. My retro power forward only played seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that yeah. was good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was basically my thought process. Like I saved him for important matchups. Um, luckily I was able to like withstand the injuries, so I didn't really need to use him there. Um, and I saved him for, yeah, basically just important matchups. Actually, that was my like, (laughs) um, yeah, I mean, so like with, with regard to like other red shirt decisions with like younger players, like I would save them for injuries to cover for injuries if I can, like if they can play, if they can contribute, like Jake Gillespie um, probably is going to be like an injury replacement. You know, he's he's pretty good. Uh, Alan Fontana, maybe, maybe good. Um, Yeah. So like, otherwise, like I just use those, their games against bad teams, you know, to like, it's not even because like they are better than the other team's players. It's so that my best players can like, avoid injury right or right. recover from injury if they are already injured although yeah. i guess that's falls under cover for injury yeah um so i think that's how i think of it too also with like fatigue it's like you know if you if you run your players like a lot like to heavy fatigue or moderate or whatever like breaking it up with these red shirt games like really helps prevent that fatigue injury or just injuries in general um so that's that's how i also use it i don't it's not necessarily to cover for injuries and that, sorry, that would be against a bad team usually, but you know, so it's not always to cover for injuries or important matchups or even just to play against bad teams. It's like to help my other players rest too, you know? Yeah. Okay. That was a lot of talking for me. (laughs) That was a lot of talking. Um, All right. Uh, do you want to talk about Santa Clara real quickly and their situation? Uh, this year? Yeah, let's do it. Cool, cool. I'll, I'll go to them and share. Okay, so first of all, if you're in D1, don't find yourself in this situation. Just avoid that. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's, that's my first word of advice. Um, so Santa Clara, and we were just a few... You know, a few minutes ago, we were talking about the fact that Santa Clara got a big recruiting class um, back when I first took over. And that recruiting class was what basically graduated this last season and was the core that left. Right. And so we have a a severe drop off in TPI here because a a total, a ton of guys left. Now, ideally, in their sophomore or junior seasons, you're recruiting their replacements. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that. (laughs) Um, So. So what ends up happening is I have two top heavy guys, right? I have Cole Brown and Modest Luckis and Luckis is pretty much useless. Let me just go ahead and say that <laughs> it's very annoying, but he's useless. Um, and then I have two freshmen in Zion McAndrews and Bruce Herb, two four stars, right? Both 13 pots, two highly coveted guys. Um, now the question becomes, do I use this freshman season to redshirt them? If I do, I'm essentially taking out any depth that I have at all. Okay. And I'm playing walk-ons at that point in time. Mm-hmm. Right. But I get, I save that, that year, I'm going to get that extra year of them at a higher SI. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't and know. So, Perry Peters looking pretty good over here. Hey, watch out for, uh, watch out for Charles Hearn. <laughs> yeah. Oh hey, yeah. Oh yeah. 107 is not bad for a walk on. I mean, uh, that's true. That's but he's a right. six, three power forward. <laughs> I mean, he's small forward now. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Hey, look at that eight perimeter defense. That's true. That's true. 11 speed. Okay. Watch out. He's you <laughs> on the court. Uh, <laughs> just I think, I think I'm faster than 11. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm 
effing with you. You're definitely a better stamina than nine. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's uh, for sure. Let's see what is. I mean, let's see. One ninety. He's a lot heavier than me. <laughs> What's his vertical? Uh, like thirty-two, I think. Oh, That's so what... he's like double yours. Nah, dude, nah. <laughs> it's like uh, thirty-three percent more. <laughs> I'm just messing. All right. Anyways, um, yeah. So it's like it's like, do I redshirt them and try to stay up because I'm now in D1, right? I'm in LL4, and the question becomes, what is it going to take for me to survive? I don't want to demote back down to LL5. I don't want to demote back down to to Division Two because it's going to take a hit on my recruiting and everything else. And so it's like, do I play them and then not redshirt them this year and hope that I survive? And then what if we demote anyways? Mm-hmm. Or do I redshirt them, accept demotion, go down, and then just re- regroup and retool, right? So that's kind of like the tough choice that I'm at right now. Right, yeah. And I mean, it's like, uh, there's a lot of risk reward involved in it. You know, it's like, if you if you redshirt them and just give up, well, I mean, that's the safe option. You're you're very much in control then, you know, like, you know, you know you're going to demote, you're fine with it. Versus like, if you don't redshirt them, then you're just, you're just trying to like thread the needle. You're trying to like just avoid demotion. Um, but you still might. And so then, it's, you know, it's like, yeah, that's a, that's a tough situation. I don't envy, don't envy you here. Well, that's because you manage your roster appropriately. Um, you try, you try. I, I mean, Oswego's in a much better situation. I don't know what I was doing, Sanfire. Anyways, <laughs> yeah. but um, yeah, so it's like, I, I really don't want to demote, but then the question becomes, okay, if I survive this year, both my two highest SI guys are leaving anyways, do I demote next year anyways? Right. And then, right. so, it, and then it's like, if I'm going to demote next year anyways, then do I just take the red shirt now and then, you know, restart again next year in LL5? I think that's the most sensible solution um, because I don't know if this seems good enough next year after those two guys leave to stay up even with, you know, really good developmental seasons out of, out of like cherry herb and Zion. Um, so I, I'm probably going to redshirt and accept emotion, but mm-hmm. it's, it's not what I want to do. I want to play them. I want to see what they can do. We can talk about it. Cause I mean, you'll have D'Alessandro, um, here too, you know, it's my starting so, center right now. You'll, you'll have, you'll have a, um, a good front court with Herb McAndrews and D'Alessandro. It's just like, who is your other guard, right? Yeah, I mean, Cherry's probably going to be starting point guard, and then somebody I recruit right now is going to be the starting shooting guard. Mm -hmm. But, like, none of the guys that I'm recruiting right now probably won't be good enough to come in and start on day one. I I think I remember what happened. You were going after Harold Ellis, St. Mary's got him, and that kind of hurt you. Yeah, it did. That was, like, 71 points down the drain. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, yeah, this is a tough decision. Uh, I think most people would say like, just accept emotion, but that's just tough to swallow. You know, like no one wants to hear that. No one wants to do that. Like we all want to be competitive. So it's, it's tough. It's still like, it's tough to like accept that. It is because so like, there's also the question of how good is this conference, right? um because like we we think it's pretty good though (laughs) we well i think it's pretty top heavy i think the teams that i'm around are not that good okay i haven't looked honestly like super hard at at all the teams like i so if i have to beat six teams out not to demote right Mm -hmm. then the the team that i would have to beat out is only six tpi ahead of me total right 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 so yeah. like the total distribution of TPI, and of course TPI is, is necessarily, is a, like a flawed metric. I have two seniors that are keeping my TPI higher than normal and whatnot, but like the talent distribution towards the bottom is not all that, all that great. Yeah. Yeah. And you have a good development coach. Maybe you even catch up a little bit. You come I do have a good development coach. And I have two 13 pots that could be playing full-time minutes. So maybe they could develop really fast, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, but it's not out of the reason of possibility that I could finish above a number of teams here and be in contention to not demote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. It's, it's a tough call, honestly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Good luck. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. You know, it's like uh, everything I would say you've already we've already talked about or you've already thought of. So it's like nothing new. I mean, you know, we can discuss it, but no, I mean, I think I, I think you hit all the points. You know, I know what I have to do. Like I have to, I have to redshirt them. Yeah, yeah. But let's talk about how they're four stars and if you redshirt them you know there's supposed there's there's this supposed redshirt penalty especially for for redshirting these higher rated guys in when people talk about higher rated i think they only mean the star ratings i, I don't think they mean potential or si i i don't honestly have any confirmation with that though to be honest um, I, I don't think there is clear confirmation about that yeah yeah so I think everyone assumes it's star ratings. I mean, we can go to the rules and, and check, I guess, but I don't think, what? That was Richard only in here once. Just search higher rated. Higher rated. Higher. <laughs> here, maybe that was it. Was that it right there? Um, yeah. No, not, not quite at least. Not quite, not quite. Um, additionally, teams with a history of redshirting highly rated. Oh, because redshirting is two words. <laughs> highly rated doesn't have a hyphen. <laughs> uh, players <laughs> will also experience diminished recruiting prowess. So yeah, it, it's not necessarily, like there's nothing about star rating here. Okay, not to mention, but this also says a history of redshirting highly rated players. Mm -hmm, yeah. So how much does one single redshirt of a high rated player impact in terms of the penalty? Yeah, I think that's another good question uh, that you wanted to talk about another point, I, right? Like, yeah. So, so I'm just going to be straight up about it, right? Like Oswego right now with Kerry Schultz, the guy that I literally just redshirted yeah. last season, right? Yeah. Um, a four star. So you would assume that if I'm going to get a redshirting penalty from recruiting or from redshirting a four star, it's going to happen this season. I'm going to feel the impact of this of that this season, right? Right, right. However, that's not what I've experienced in my recruiting. And it's not well. It's not even just one guy for you, actually. Too. I mean, you've redshirted uh, Calvert, who's a four star, and and then just Schultz, I guess. So it's two guys. Uh, with with uh, San Clara, you've redshirted Lepkus who's a five star, you know, um, that was like quite a few seasons ago though. So I wonder if that's probably why. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, we can talk about how, how long it lasts and when it wears off. Um, and yeah, I mean, you have two guys yeah, Calvert's a, a, a few years ago too. So, um, but yeah, I mean, like you said, you, you haven't really experienced too bad of a hit, right. Too bad of a penalty. No. And so like, I've always been the type of guy that wants to redshirt as much as possible. And I, there's, you know, we track the amount of, of contacts it takes to recruit guys and whatnot. And it's never been like, you know, and I've looked back on it. It's never been so drastic that I'm like, Oh my God, the redshirt penalty. And like I said, with Kerry Schultz, a perfect example of redshirting a higher rated player and wait, maybe. So it says maybe it, Hmm. Because it says that a history, no, it just says history of redshirting higher rated players. I was thinking, oh, maybe recruits want to come in and play their freshman season. So if you don't redshirt players during the freshman season, the penalty won't apply. But I'm not sure the, the game is like that. Yeah. De delineating. Yeah, exactly. The difference. Um, but so I redshirt Schultz. He's a highly rated player. And then this season I'm recruiting a four star Julius Scholl, right? And I got to high in 18 contacts. I don't mind sharing with you guys because if you're going to go after him, I have more contact points to spend. So whatever. Wait, wait, wait. He's a, I thought he was a, he just raced to a four star. I thought he was a three star recently. No, he's been a four star no, for I mean, a while. Yeah. Oh, never mind. Okay. I'm looking at, I was thinking, I was looking at something different, I guess, at some point. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. if I'm going to fill a penalty, it should be another four star after just redshirting of highly rated four star. And mm -hmm. yet, like I said, I moved to high in a total of 18 contacts, which is a very aggressive fast rate. For for you historically, at least. I mean, I'm sure someone's gonna gonna be out there like, well, I did it faster than some guy. Yeah, <laughs> you you know, oh, I have 12 open scholarships and I've never registered any one of my coaches 20 in recruiting. I did it in two contacts, whatever. <laughs> two but contacts like, to high. That's crazy. <laughs> my point, my point still stands that like. I thought I would feel the redshirting penalty from redshirting Schultz, and I don't yet have an example of where that's applied. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good point. Um, you know, for me, you know, we've talked about my recruiting uh, issues, and like you can see, I redshirted basically everybody, not even basically, <laughs> literally everybody, and like one of them was a four star, but that was last season, so I should have only felt it this season. But I've had issues with other guys, so you know, is it because I redshirted everybody, or is it because I have, you know, like uh let's see like a freshman here and and last I'm, I'm more thinking last season i had two sophomores um you know I, is it more like roster depth or is it the redshirt penalty it's obviously like a mix of all of it of course but like what's the stronger factor like what weighs more in each scenario i mean it might just be different in every scenario i don't know I, but the point here is that there is no clear definition of how strong the penalty may be how much it's going to apply to your situation, whether or not your coach's recruiting rating can trump that penalty, you know, all these different factors, playing time. If you redshirt a guy and then he moves on and there's a highly rated player that could come in and start right away as a freshman because the playing time's there and your coach is a high recruit and you're low on scholarships, then maybe there is no penalty or maybe the penalty is just not noticed. Yeah. Yeah. I, I have no idea. <laughs> it's, it's a good question that I haven't figured out the answer to. I don't think I ever will. <laughs> it's it's probably a case of there's no one answer, right? Like mm -hmm. we said, it's always going to be so context. There's too many variables for us to define one answer. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, every situation is going to be different. And it's like so many little things might change uh, or result in a big change. You know, it's like, you know, these these recruits, they evaluate their playing time not not just on their primary position not even just on the positions listed it's almost like they have this like knowledge of like where they're going to play or where they want to play on your team and they evaluate your roster based on that um and you know lots of people say like okay high school sophomores are getting are only going to look at like sophomores in college and lower or in younger i don't know i've seen i i feel like i've felt different how i felt it differently where it's like they might look at juniors in lower or something you know maybe ben fong just doesn't want to play for you bro well <laughs> 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 yeah sunny mcafee too man sheesh sorry i had to go there yeah ben fong that hurts he's asian too come on keep it in the family <laughs> yeah um <laughs> So yeah, I mean, that's the redshirt penalty. And, you know, with these deeper questions, I don't think we'll ever find an answer to them, but I think it's it's worth discussing further, um, you know, in the community. I, I, and I know it has been, but it's just like, everyone has different opinions and everyone rightly should have different opinions, but everyone has like specific examples where it's an exception. And that's always gonna be the case. So I don't think that there is, like you said, any one answer. It's it's not one size fits all. That's just not how the game is. Right, and right. we're just going to need to accept that as the truth. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then what's our last like deep question? I don't know. What is it? Oh, I thought you remembered. Sorry. Uh, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> it has to do with like the potential of the player, right? Uh, the ceiling of the player, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Fair. I, oh, oh, Andrew, I remember uh, our last deep topic <laughs> was going to be talking about the potential of the player and whether or not that plays into a factor of redshirting. Right. And then they're yeah. ceiling. Nice, nice, uh, nice recall there. Yeah. Nice. You know, I didn't want you to forget. So I stored it away. Oh, thanks. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think a lot of people suggest that you do not redshirt a player if they're like, if they come in, close to their ceiling if they come into college close to their ceiling so i think the common example is a 12 pot four star who is like 120 plus basically so like kind of kit pit and calvert i i think a lot of people would would have told you not to redshirt him when you first got him you did i mean it's worked out in my opinion i, I mean he looks pretty good so i understand why people say don't redshirt him right i get i get the argument i do but I'm going to get an entire senior year out of this guy at 174 SI plus. Yeah, right. I, I don't want to like miss out on that. Why would I miss out on that? 
Yeah. I mean, so like we see his college growth, 13, 11, 14, 13. And like, okay, that's not like spectacular for a 12 pot, but it's good, especially for one who was at 123 coming in. But then you can go back to his like high school and it's again, 13, 14, 11, uh, eight, right. Yeah. Again, not, not spectacular. Um, so I think it kind of lines up like not spectacular, not spectacular. That makes sense. Um, but like, like you said, you're going to get a 174 out of him in his entire senior year. Like whether that's his ceiling close to it, even if it's further away, like that's really good. If it's further away, he should have more room to grow even still this year. Um, so like, so I don't know. I'd rather have a guy at 160 plus for two seasons and, and obviously more in the senior season than have him at 150 and, uh, you know, 147 and 160 then, right? Yeah. So also like thinking about the recruiting evaluation, right? Because eval is going to tell you a lot about what the limits per category are and stuff like that. So two comments. Theor- he has. Theoretically, theoretically. Theoretically, although it holds pretty true. Fair, yeah. For the most part. So two good two comments he has. Could be an excellent shooter. Or three. Mm-hmm. Could be an excellent shooter, could really be a long range shooter, and could be a good all around defensive player. Mm-hmm. I wanted to see what his ceiling was going to be for those categories and then maximize the shit out of it. Right. And now he's a 19 in shooting range, 17 outside shot, and a 19 in perimeter defense. I'm going to get an entire season of those stats with an 18 basketball IQ. Mm-hmm. Why yeah. in the world would I not want that? Yeah, right, right. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I, I just, for me, it's like, I'm going to redshirt any opportunity where it's not going to, you know, where it makes sense for me and more scenarios than not, it makes sense for me to redshirt in my opinion. Right. Right. So, yeah. Um, I think, you know, people say like, I, I think, I think it's cause I, I, I think that the idea of hitting a ceiling early is is has a negative connotation but like we said like getting a guy at their best for longer is good like i don't well rather i don't see that as a bad thing you know i don't either like i would rather a guy hit his ceiling in his junior year and get two seasons out of his ceiling than he hit it halfway through his senior year what's the point what what difference does it make if they hit their ceiling sooner you get, you get their best for a longer period of time. Yeah. And honestly, if their ceiling just isn't that good, like if we're talking about like a nine pot or a 10 pot and the ceiling is 130 or 140 or whatever, right? It's like, well, they'll be surpassed by a better player eventually. Then you just play that person. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Did you like waste a year of a scholarship? Like that's not that big a deal. You well, know? even like in the case of John Vogel, he's an 11 pot three star. Right. And somebody that I brought in that, you know, I didn't expect to have great expectations for expect to have great expectations. I didn't have great expectations for him. Right. But he developed really well. And, you know, I'm going to get sure he hit his ceiling earlier. He's likely not going to grow more than 164, maybe a couple points this season. But I still get an entire season of him of him at his ceiling of 164. And he has really good point guard stats. Well, pretty good point guard stats. So, like, I, I for me. I, my two best SI players right now, I'm going to get an entire season out of at their, at their supposed ceiling. Well, I think the, the, the argument more so is with four and five stars to like weigh a, the redshirt against the redshirt penalty. The, fair, fair. So Vog, Vogel, theoretically, as we said, with four and five stars, we do not, I'm not super sure of that either still, but like theoretically Vogel wouldn't qualify for that, obviously. Yeah, fair point. I'm just speaking to like the fact that, you know, even with 11 pots, you still want to maximize guys at their, at their highest total. Right. Right. SI for me, at least. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I think, I think the other part of the argument is like, well, the player could be useful like in that freshman year, cause they're so high and then they won't be, I, I don't know. I mean, I, they'll obviously still be useful as a senior because they will, they will naturally improve and become probably one of your best players still. So it's like, I wouldn't even say it's like proportionally more useful. I would say it's still not. So I don't, I agree. I'm still with you here. I'm just like trying to think of like the other side of the argument, you know? Sure. You're trying to play devil's advocate. I get it. Yeah. As I do. Um, 
but like okay with my four star with rochelle right um the 12 pot four star i think that's what we're really looking for um wheels <laughs> wheels barrow <laughs> so like you know we talked about calvert's growth like not being spectacular in college but also in high school and like my guy's a retro freshman so we're not sure what he's going to be like throughout college and he was only a plus 11 in his redshirt year but in high school he's a plus 15 a plus 18 and then a plus 11 but then a plus 15 like that is better than calvert <laughs> yeah you know so like will he slow down I, I, yes he'll slow down eventually but like what if he's hitting plus 15s, plus 18s, you know, in these seasons that he's, that I'm going to play him now. Um, and he becomes like a 190, like, you know, that. Whew. Or even if he never hits 190, what if he goes plus 18 this season and then mm-hmm. plus 14 the season after that, right? Yeah. And yeah. he's a redshirt junior at his ceiling. Or near right. his ceiling, you're still going to get two full years of him at his best possible him. Right, right. It's, it's still going to be. <laughs> it's still going to be like that good of an outcome. I, I don't like. You know what I mean? I just. I. I don't see the argument against it, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. In, ter- in terms of like the hitting the ceiling early part of it, I. I don't exactly either. Um, when it comes to like retro penalty, I can see it. Or. I think that's the main point basically i remember that barrow was a three-star until like the very last dev day right um it like mid-season i thought it i thought it was much later yeah it was like very close to the end of the was it the end of the season no it it was sometime mid-season um i mean i can check because because it'll say like here if he's a four-star so when i signed him in january he was just a three-star wait what and then he upgraded to a four star in one of the devs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. He, he, so yeah, it was obviously after January twenty eighth. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I, remember, I was super upset about that because yeah, I'm because you wanted him. to redshirt him, yeah. And I did anyways, but I was like a little, I was more hesitant. To so do it. Yeah. that would have been so January twenty eighth, right? Game mm-hmm. day. That's so after mid season, yeah. That's like last ten games of the season. Oh really? like ish yeah mm. yeah 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 pretty much yeah pretty much 10 games i remember when he <laughs> god damn it wheels literally it was the very end of the season where he jumped to a four star and you're like no no <laughs> yeah yeah that like if bad. it could be the michael scott meme with you be like no that was you <laughs> yeah 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 so i mean i i, I don't have the issue I, like, everyone has their different philosophies i mean more so and like that's fine this is just our thoughts um yeah i mean that's how it goes you know people people build their teams differently people run their teams differently um you know take our advice or not take other ask other people get a lot of opinions you know form your own then you could be listening to me and saying that guy's about to demote because he didn't manage (laughs) his roster and that is a fair criticism good sir but i am here to tell you my points well, but like you and I pretty much agree on this and like, yeah, you made demote, but someone here won a national championship. Exactly. So listen. Yeah. So I'm going to throw that in everyone's face every time. I know. I just realized it just hit me. I'm going to have to hear it every single podcast. Well, you bring it up. so Just to get it out of the way hmm. because it, it hurts less if I bring it up <laughs> than if you do. <laughs> Yeah, I, I see. I see that. I see that. Yeah, yeah. It's strategic on my end. <laughs> All right. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about here? I think that's it. I think we're about done. We've talked for quite a bit of time. I think it's a good topic, and it's prevalent now because you know people got to start making their redshirt decisions now, basically, right? Yeah. So, you know, make those redshirt decisions now and hold strong. Hold strong. Don't hold don't strong. Uh, fight it. Don't give in to the temptation to to play that red shirt, to pull, play that sixth game. You know? Don't do it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, man. I'll talk to you on the weekend. All right. Uh, leave us some comments, like, subscribe, all the good stuff. Let us know what you think about red shirting. Let us know if you disagree. I'm sure we'll hear from NAF. We always do. Um, but besides that, we'll see you guys next weekend. Peace. As in Sunday, not next weekend.
Peace. Eh, same thing. <laughs>